Your Classical Storytime is supported by All Energy Solar, dedicated to making a brighter future for your children. Offering solar installation services that reduce carbon emissions and minimize electricity usage for decades to come. AllEnergySolar.com Hello! Welcome to Your Classical Storytime. I'm Ines. And I'm Ada. Today, we're going to tell you an amazing Maya legend from a long, long time ago. But first, who are the Maya people? The Maya people are a native population who have lived in places like the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, Honduras, Belize, and Guatemala for over 2,000 years. They are still here today and have a rich history and culture. The Maya civilization was very advanced in mathematics and astronomy. They studied the stars and sky and used those observations to create a special calendar that had 365 days, just like our calendar today. They had a very special way of writing and recorded their history in books, but sadly, many of these books were destroyed by the Spanish colonizers when they arrived. However, the Maya people have kept their traditions alive through storytelling, passing down their culture from one generation to another. That's why it's important to keep telling these stories, right? Yes, it is an important part of our culture. Then let's get started. This is the tale of the little man from Uxmal. Featuring music by Silvestre Revueltas. The legend says that once upon a time, there was a powerful sorceress who lived near the great Maya city of Uxmal. The sorceress lived alone, and her deepest desire was to have a child, a baby that would lighten up her humble home with smiles and laughter. One day, the sorceress was out on a stroll when she found a little quetzal egg laying in the middle of the forest. A quetzal is a beautiful, tiny green bird with a red tummy that lives in forests of tropical America. She gently picked it up, took it home, wrapped it in a magic cloth, and waited for something magical to happen. The sorceress waited patiently, checking on the little egg every single morning. Until one day, the egg hatched. There, sitting inside, was a tiny baby he was so small, he fit in the palm of her hand. The sorceress cried with joy as she cradled her tiny newborn child. The sorceress was delighted to have a son to raise. She fed him, loved him, and taught him how to fish and grow veggies. To protect him from falling fruits, she gently hid a little stone disc in his hair. As time went by, she realized the tiny boy had a very special talent, music. He loved listening to and performing music, singing and mastering any instrument in a matter of days. There was never a silent day in their home. One day, while the sorceress was out chopping wood, the little boy approached his mother's fogon, a big fire pit over which she would cook. He noticed something peeking out from the big pot that always rested there. He reached in a tiny hand and dug out a hidden instrument. Ooh. It was a kind of drum called tunkul. The tiny boy was excited. He had found a new instrument to play. Without hesitation, he took the drum into his little hands and began playing with vigor. The tiny boy was so wrapped up in his flashy, spontaneous music making that he didn't realize it was summoning magic around him. Without knowing it, he had accidentally triggered an old Maya prophecy that said whoever played this drum in a very special way would become the next king of Uxmal. When the sorceress heard the drum from afar, she rushed home, but it was too late. 
the prophecy had already been set into motion. She became very afraid for the future that awaited her tiny child and reprimanded him. Don't you ever play this drum again. Do you understand? Yes, Cheech, he said obediently to his mother. Years went by, and the tiny child eventually became a tiny teen, and then a tiny young man. His mother loved him just the way he was, and every day they would play music together. But one day, when the sorceress went to town, the little man was cleaning the house when he came across the forbidden tunkul peeking out from the fogon. I remember this, he said. Chich said I should never play it, but I'm sure she wouldn't mind if I played just one song. And so he began to play. Just like last time, exciting rhythms filled the air and the magic aura began to surround the tiny man. Except this time, it wasn't his mother who heard him play, but a group of the king's guards who were walking on the path near his home. Hey, do you hear that? One of the guards said. That sounds like the drum of the prophecy. The guards burst in, startling the little man. I don't hurt me. I promise I'll never play this drum again. Too late, you're coming with us. They took the tiny man and his tungkul drum to the palace of the king of Ushmal, who realized that this was the man destined to take his place. This made the king very angry, and so he did the only reasonable thing a threatened king would do. Tiny man, I, the king of Ushmal, challenge you to a wrestling match. If you win, you will become the next king of Ushmal. But if I win, you must leave and never return. The tiny man knew he had no choice but to accept, so he shook the king's hand and agreed. The king, feeling very confident, ordered his subjects to build a giant arena in the center of the city and ordered all of the people of Ushmal to attend. However, on the day of the duel, the king suddenly became nervous. He was an old man, after all. And maybe the tiny man was stronger than he looked. So, the king decided to change the rules of the duel. When he entered the arena, he announced, I have decided we will not wrestle today. Instead, whoever can break the most cocoyoles on their head will win the battle. Cocoyoles are small fruits that grow on palm trees, but they are very hard and difficult to open, kind of like coconuts are. So, breaking them on your head is, well, hard, but the tiny man wasn't scared. After all, he had a trick up his sleeve. Remember that stone disc the sorcerers put in his hair to protect him from falling fruit? It was still there, hidden in his hair. So when it was his turn, he calmly broke a cocoyol open on his head. And then another. And another. And another. Until he had broken three entire baskets of cocoyoles. The entire city was amazed, cheering loudly as the tiny man sat there peacefully, unfazed by the many broken cocoyoles surrounding him. But the king was angry. If he didn't beat this tiny man, his time as a ruler of Ushmal would be over. So, he sat down, took the first cocoyol in his hand, brought it down on his head, and fainted. The crowd went wild. The tiny man had bested the king of Ushmal. They ran to their new king and asked him, What would you like for us to build you, O new king? What are your orders? And the tiny man responded, All I want is two new temples, one for myself and one for my dear Cheech. And that's how the biggest temple of Ushmal was built. You can still see it today if you ever visit the city. And thanks to the little man's victory, the people of Ushmal learned that even the smallest person can make the biggest difference. The end.
Thanks for listening to Your Classical Storytime from APM, American Public Media. Find out more about today's story and explore the rest of our library at yourclassical.org.